Now, recent global data softness has dampened oil investors' expectations for demand growth. However, some forecasters still anticipate higher oil prices in the second half of the year, primarily due to slower output growth and the tightening of the market. And joining me now to unpack the outlook for oil in greater detail is Raymond Phillips, who is Senior Commodities Trader at RMB. Thank you so much for your time, Ray. Well, let's actually take a look at, you know, the effect that the uh, today's data uh, had. Of course, we did have... A, a cooling of inflation in the U.S. Set to 3% in June from 3.3% the previous month. Talk to me about what's priced into the oil market after uh, that inflation figure, but also after the dovish comments that we've got from Jerome Powell this week. Sure. Um, so, look, I, I guess the macro picture is always such an important variable when it comes to energy prices. Um, you're very correct in saying that, you know, there was a reaction from the Brent market today um, off the back of that C US CPI print. I would highlight, though, that if you look at how maybe a commodity like gold reacted and compare that to how Brent reacted, you're sort of looking at a situation where perhaps many in the energy side of things, traders on that, uh, on that side, actually priced in the sort of cooling coming through. Uh... Or at the very least, they are at least looking more, let's say, the more internal oil market fundamentals rather than the macro picture at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, mm. uh, gold has broken through $2,400 per ounce, yeah. whereas uh, Brent, I think, has moved roughly about, let's say, 50 bibs from that mm. point of the release of that data. Well, let's actually talk about those uh, internal uh, oil market fundamentals. What are markets going by at this point? So I think the hot topic at the moment is definitely everyone waiting for this U.S. demand season to come through. Um, it's typically around this time of the year that you, you see an uptick in demand, um, a lot more traveling, a lot more business activity. And as a result, there's more demand coming through for energy products or oil products, and that obviously feeds through into the crude side as well. Um, many commentators were saying that after the U.S. holiday, the 4th of July, that we'd see that as a pivot point. And you'd start to see that demand coming through. I'd say that we're still sort of waiting for that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Brent looks like it's in its mid-range at the moment. But I think if that demand does come through, that seasonal demand, we might get close to, let's say, $88 per barrel. Is there anything that's showing um, in those U.S. oil inventories right now? Anything that it's currently signaling? Or is it, as you say, just a wait and see? So I would say it's more of a wait and see situation. Mm -hmm. Look, obviously, you guys are always very keen to look at those uh, Department of Energy um, inventory levels. Yeah. The last one came through as a bit of a surprise. It okay. was about 4 million barrels uh, draw across both products and crude. I think any sort of signs of that, maybe you come back to my first point mm. where everyone's waiting to see, is this demand coming through? Because, of course, if there's uh, draws in inventories, it's potentially a sign that, you know, that demand is starting to come through now. Ah, all right. Where is OPEC in all of this? What is expected from OPEC, particularly in the second half of the year? And uh, just also what they're forecasting on their side. Yeah, so, so I mean, obviously, OPEC is also very important in this equation. Um, I think the focal points a couple of months ago, let's say about a month ago, was um, their, their latest meeting. Over there, it did come out as a bit of a very surprise. Um, mm. Look, the cuts were extended but not as far as many guys were expecting. Okay. Um, so now the question is, is OPEC going to stay the course? Are their members all going to stick to their quotas? And how quickly are they going to unwind these voluntary cuts that those eight members came through initially with? Um, their prediction is that they're going to unwind those slowly over the next um, year. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did put a caveat in there that, uh, you know, it's depending on market conditions. I have to say most of the commentary out there suggests that they do that at as slow as pace as possible, um, given that some of the, the big OPEC members, uh, for example, Saudi Arabia, really would love Brent crude using that as a bellwether to be above, um, let's say, $95 per barrel. Yeah. OPEC um, cut extensions, um, and then you're looking at cooling inflation, maybe some uh, demand growth that is expected. Would that then not kind of cause a kind of push effect on inflation that has started cooling down? Would it be a kind of push and pull on that front? Yeah, 100%. It's that, it's that tricky thing of, you know, almost a cyclical thing where, um, like you're saying, yeah. energy prices go higher, inflation goes higher. We're yeah. not out of the sticky inflation uh, cycle just yet. The uh, Fed can't come through and uh, you know release uh, the brakes on the on the economy. So, 
yeah, it's it's very much a cyclical thing like that, or one feeds into the other. Yeah. Um, I would say, though, I think the market has digested the situation in terms of energy inflation, let's call it that. Um, I I'd, I'd sort of look at, if we once again using Brent as a bellwether, yeah. closer to $100 per barrel, I think then we start to see it really moving the dial in terms of the inflation outlook from here. Ah. I know also that market participants love coming out with targets. Are there any targets that you're foreseeing in the second <laughs> half of the year or is the situation just still too volatile for you to get to that, to that point? Look, I think it's um, like we were discussing. Yeah, there's quite a few um, variables at play. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, at the moment, I think most of the commentary seems to be around, at least for the time being, Brent staying in pretty much a very range-bound motion. Um, would say probably a floor of eighty dollars per barrel and a, okay. a, as a, and a cap of ninety dollars per barrel. So I think it sort of trades in that range for now before we get some further catalysts and more information. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us insights into that oil market, Ray. That was a senior commodities trader at RMB Raymond Phillips.